In the 60s, my father was a foreman on a farm, and he loved going out to hunt at night. He almost always went alone through the farm fields, and that night was a full moon, which he liked the most because the night was very bright. Others told him never to go to the Invernada field, as they called a certain spot in that region, because they said many ghosts appeared in that place. But my father claimed he wasn't afraid. That night he took his horse and his three dogs and went to that field. When they got near a tree, the dogs started barking at it, and my father began to dig, hoping to find an armadillo. The dogs started sniffing again in another direction, and my father, even walking a little farther, continued to dig where the dogs were barking. He could even hear the armadillos snorting, but it was never found. Suddenly, the dogs got scared and ran away from the tree where they had been digging. They came howling toward my father, who was crouched down digging when he heard a very loud snort behind him. Despite the loudness, he turned around, hoping it was an armadillo that had now come out of its hole. But when he looked back, he saw a horrifying thing. The creature was roughly the size of a dark sheep, but about three times bigger, with huge ears almost dragging on the ground. My father quickly stood up and ran toward his horse, terrified while calling the dogs to come with him. He knew that creature could kill them. The dogs followed my father, barking and howling non-stop. It seemed they already knew the creature and were well aware of what it was capable of. For a moment, my father thought he wouldn't make it out alive as he, the horse, and the dogs distanced themselves from that place, realizing that the creature was following them. However, when they reached the gate, the creature simply disappeared. After that day, my father never returned to that place, but he continued hunting as usual, though only in places he considered safe. There are even other reports from farmers who have also seen this creature. Good night. Hello, my name is Jonas. I'm from the region of Pernambuco in Igarasu, but what I will recount here did not happen to me. It was passed down by a family from a town in the interior of Minas Gerais. I don't remember the name of the town, but the event took place in 1935. It all began on a typical day at the farm. There they produced milk, eggs, cheese, everything a farm could produce. All their money came from the land and the animals. The farmer at that time had a son named Miguel, who was his father's pride and joy. Since he didn't have an older son to help with the chores, Little Miguel always assisted him so that the farm wouldn't be a burden on his father alone. Nearby, there was another farmer who was a bit odd, somewhat dirty, always with a pale appearance and even a bit smelly. He didn't like the success of Mr. Fernando, the farmer, as many had stopped buying his products. Because of this, the two always argued when they met. But Fernando was a kind person, and wanted the quarrels to end so that they could help each other. Still, the other farmer didn't listen. Over time, many people started commenting that they had seen a very strange creature at night on the road. It was something large and black, walking crookedly and resembling a wolf. On some nights, dead animals began to appear on Fernando's farm. He was very shocked because there was no animal in the region that could cause such destruction. So, he went to the other farmer to ask if anything had happened to his animals too. But, as usual, he responded arrogantly and with hatred, saying no and that he didn't want to see Fernando there again. During this argument, Fernando smelled a strong scent of blood and noticed that the other farmer's teeth were strangely sharp. On his way back home, he thought about everything he had seen but ended up dismissing it. 
When he arrived at the farm, his wife and son were with a close friend. Fernando found it odd, as were the animals, which were all mangled. The friend asked if it could have been a werewolf. Not understanding anything, Fernando replied that it was just a legend, but the friend insisted that this being, from hell, was real, and that he suspected the other farmer, as he always acted strangely and even disappeared on some nights, not to mention the foul smell emanating from him. With this in mind, Fernando decided to find out if it was true, and if this werewolf really existed. When night came, he took an old goat, tied it to a tree, and kept watch to see what would happen. After three nights with nothing happening, they decided to drop the matter. Some time later, when they were about to take the production to sell, Fernando and his son took the farm's truck to make the delivery. Before they left, the other farmer appeared out of nowhere talking nonsense and making threats. He told Fernando to be careful, or something bad would happen, especially to his son. Fernando, full of anger, lunged at him, and they started fighting. After many punches, Fernando decided to stop, because he didn't want to set a bad example for his son. The other farmer then said that in three days, Fernando would pay for what he had done. Three days later, Miguel asked his father to go fishing since they rarely had time to have fun together. The friend who had mentioned the werewolf asked to join them to catch up. After an afternoon of fishing and laughter, it started to get dark and they were preparing some fish to eat. Suddenly they began to hear heavy footsteps in the woods running all around. They were on alert because they didn't know if what was out there could be dangerous. The noise stopped for a while, but soon after they started hearing strange growls. Everyone was very scared, especially Miguel. Then that thing appeared near the river. It was something large, covered in fur, with intensely colored eyes, huge arms disproportionate to its body. At that moment, Miguel exclaimed that it was a werewolf. Miguel was paralyzed with fear and Fernando realized that the beast was staring intently at the boy, as if it had a certain interest in him. The demonic creature began to run towards Miguel at full speed. It was the most horrifying thing they had ever seen. Fernando and his friend tried to run to help Miguel, but they didn't make it in time. That thing grabbed the child and dragged him into the woods. When they saw Miguel being dragged by that beast into the forest, Fernando panicked and began to cry out in lament and pain, pleading for the creature not to take his son, but to take him instead. After chasing the werewolf, they lost sight of it, but continued searching. As they walked through the woods, they smelled something rotten, but what scared them the most was the sound of the animal eating. Fernando had no doubt that the sound could only be the beast devouring his son. They heard the sounds of bones breaking and flesh being torn until suddenly, the creature let out a very loud howl. Fernando and his friend had their ears ringing from the intensity of the howl. After that, they heard something running through the woods. They continued searching for Miguel until the friend found him. With tears in his eyes, he asked Fernando not to come closer, but he did anyway, and upon seeing the scene, burst into tears. The pain was so great that he screamed very loudly while his friend tried to calm him down. After some time, the friend managed to convince Fernando that the best thing to do at that moment was to return home, as that beast could appear again. When they arrived at the farm, Fernando's wife in shock asked what had happened and why Miguel was not with them. Upon hearing the news, the woman, with tears in her eyes and full of anger, went after Fernando, saying that this joke had gone too far and that she wanted to see her son at all costs. 
Fernando's friend, with a loud voice, tried to convince the woman that they were not joking, that her son had indeed been killed by a werewolf. They stayed awake all night, and at dawn, they sat down to talk about what had happened. Still very shaken, they didn't know what to do. Filled with rage, Fernando went to where they kept the weapons, grabbed the rifle, and remembered the threat that the strange man from the other farm had made. He went to confront him. When he got there, he shouted, Show yourself, you bastard. Today you will die. But no one appeared. Fernando's anger was so great that he took out his rage by killing all the animals on the property until he ran out of bullets in the rifle. When he returned home, he told what he had done, and, when they least expected it, the strange man appeared, laughing and speaking with a sarcastic voice. It was a shame what happened to your son. I kept my promise. He also said that Fernando's son would die within three days. Upon hearing this, no one could believe what the man had said. Fernando didn't shoot him because there were no more bullets, but even so, he grabbed a machete and went after him, determined to kill him for murdering his son. However, just as he was about to strike, the man punched him so hard that Fernando was thrown far away. It wasn't normal for someone to have such strength. With a terrifying look, the man even said that Miguel's mother would be the next to die. Terrified, Fernando's wife began to pray while the man walked away. After some time, they decided they would set a trap to kill that man as they were sure he was the werewolf. However, the man disappeared and was not seen for months. During this period, the farm almost didn't produce anything because Fernando and his wife had no more energy after what had happened to their son. Many asked where Miguel was, and to avoid telling the truth, they said he had gone to live with an aunt in the city to try to have a better life and study. They didn't know they would still have another night of pure terror. One night, before going to sleep, they heard the dogs barking very loudly, as if they had seen something, and the other animals were very agitated. They looked out the window and observed the surroundings to see what was going on. When they least expected it, they saw that creature again. Black fur, intense eyes, looking like a dog, but much larger and deformed. The creature exuded a very strong odor. At that moment, Fernando remembered the unfortunate day when his son was taken and the threat the man had made before disappearing. Quickly, he and his wife grabbed a gun and a rifle. Outside, the beast was killing the dogs one by one. After killing all the dogs, the creature began circling the house, sniffing near the walls and scratching them, looking for a way in. The creature let out a very loud howl, the same one it had given in the forest, causing their ears to ring again. Fernando's wife screamed in fear. When the creature realized there were people inside the house, it started trying to break in, pounding hard on the door. Panic took hold of them both. Suddenly, they began to hear the galloping of a horse, followed by a shout calling, Fernando, it's the werewolf again. Let's kill it now. Fernando stepped out of the house and saw the creature. It really looked like it had come from hell. Without thinking twice, Fernando began shooting at the beast, hitting it with a shot that made it cry out in pain. His wife, seeing all this, was trembling with fear and couldn't stop screaming in terror. The two friends with their guns didn't stop shooting at the beast which still had the strength to advance on them. Over time,
There was a small village lost in the middle of a forest where the inhabitants lived in complete harmony with nature. But a terrible secret haunted that place, the legend of the werewolf. It was said that on full moon nights, a dreadful creature, half man and half wolf, roamed the village streets, terrorizing anyone who crossed its path. Among the villagers was a widow named Elisa, who lived isolated in a small house at the edge of the forest. She was known for her beauty and mystery, and many sought her out for advice and magical potions. But what no one knew was that Elisa harbored a secret even greater than the werewolf. One night during a storm, a stranger knocked on Elisa's door seeking shelter. The man was wounded and seemed frightened. Elisa, with her generous heart, opened the doors of her home and tended to all of the stranger's injuries. During the night, while the storm still raged outside, the two talked at length, sharing secrets and fears. That strange man revealed that he was fleeing from a curse that had plagued him for years. He told Elisa about his transformation into a werewolf on full moon nights and how it had led him to commit terrible acts. Elisa, with her wisdom and compassion, promised to help the man rid himself of the curse. From that night on, Elisa and the man began to meet regularly. She taught him about magical potions that could help him control the transformation. However, on full moon nights, the tension between them grew. The man feared losing control and harming Elisa, while she feared failing in her mission to save her friend. On one particular night of transformation, Elisa prepared herself to face the werewolf. The man transformed into a gigantic wolf, ready to attack. But before he could harm Elisa, she stopped him with her magical potions and words of enchantment. The werewolf found himself trapped in a kind of energy field, unable to move or attack. Elisa approached the wolf, looking into the wild eyes where her friend was hidden. With great care, she began to recite an ancient spell, asking the moon and stars to break the curse that tormented him. The werewolf howled, seeming to feel great pain and despair. But Elisa did not waver, and with a final breath, the wolf transformed back into the man she knew. He opened his eyes, confused and frightened, looking around, realizing he was back in his human form. The man now knew how to break the transformation process and could return to his human form whenever he wished. Now he would hurt no one else. Finally, the attacks in that place ceased and everyone could return to living in peace. Good night. Around the middle of 2008, I had to take the train every night to and from college. During many nights on the train, I overheard some passengers talking about a supposed creature. According to them, it was a beast that chased the train when it passed through a wooded area, but this only happened at night, and it was quite late when I returned from college on that same train. I'd even heard a passenger say that his cousin had once run from the monster and saved himself by climbing a tree and staying there until dawn. A few nights later, after going to the library to gather some books for a project I needed to work on, I ended up leaving college at 11 p.m. and rushed to catch the train, as it was the last one heading to my home. After that, the next one would only come at 4 a.m. When I managed to catch the train, I sat down and fell asleep, as there were 15 stations before reaching my destination. After a while, I was awakened by a hand tapping my shoulder. It was one of the train staff informing me that the train had broken down and another train would pass nearby to pick up the passengers. He asked me and the other passengers to disembark and wait for the new train to arrive. While we were outside, we began to hear a very strange howl. The passengers, who had been chatting, all fell silent trying to figure out what that sound was. Suddenly, 
Shadows and the sound of breaking branches were seen and heard. It seemed as if one of the conductors already knew what was out there because, in a very frantic manner, he shouted for everyone to get back on the train. With all that tension and seeing the seriousness of that conductor, I didn't think twice and ran back to the train. Everyone did the same. While we were all inside the train, we saw those shadows passing by all sides again, and the sounds of breaking branches were frequently heard. When the other train that was supposed to rescue us got close, the conductor radioed to say that no one should disembark. They claimed not to know what was out there, but for safety, it was better that we stayed inside the carriage. They only allowed us to transfer to the other train at dawn. We never actually saw what it was, nor did they tell us, but I can bet that the conductor knew very well what was out there. And it was probably a werewolf. Good night. Good. My name is Madureira, and I am one of the few survivors of the werewolf attacks that plagued the city of Londrina in the 1970s. I was 15 years old at the time and lived with my parents and brother in the Agua da Sababoras region, a rural area far from the city center. We were a simple, hard-working family, living off corn farming and raising chickens. Our life was peaceful until rumors started circulating about a werewolf prowling the area. People said it appeared on full moon nights and attacked animals and people who ventured down the road. No one knew where it came from or who it was. Some said it was a cursed man, others that it was a demon sent by the devil. The fact was it was a real threat and no one was safe. I remember the first time I saw it, it was on a Saturday night in June 1975. My brother and I were coming back from a friend's house at the other end of the road. We had gone to play soccer and watch television and lost track of time. By the time we realized it was nearly midnight and the full moon illuminated the sky. We grabbed our bikes and started pedaling towards our home, about 10 kilometer away. We were almost there when we heard a terrible howl coming from the woods. We stopped our bikes and looked sideways, trying to see what it was. That's when it emerged from behind a tree and stared at us with piercing eyes. It was a werewolf, and it was very hungry. It was enormous, with brown fur and green eyes standing on two legs with sharp claws and pointed teeth. It growled at us and prepared to attack. We panicked and dropped our bikes. We ran as fast as we could, screaming for help, but it was faster and caught up with my brother, who was lagging behind. It grabbed him by the leg and dragged him into the woods. At that moment, I thought I would lose my brother, but a courage I didn't know I had made me run towards him and start punching that creature with inexplicable strength until it finally let go of my brother. Our friends, seeing the situation, started throwing stones at the creature. My brother and I ran back towards the group. We were all dirty and scratched, especially him, who had been dragged along the ground by the creature. But what mattered was that we were alive and managed to reach our home. Our parents, seeing our condition and hearing what had happened, called the police. But the police did nothing. They said it was an isolated case and that my brother had been attacked by a wild animal. They didn't even bother to search for the creature or investigate the woods. But looking back on this story now, I find it highly unlikely that they would have found the werewolf, as this supernatural creature can hide very well. Even today, I live in fear. I know this creature is a man and that he has an identity. I just need to find out who he is and where he hides. And if I discover that, 
I intend to put an end to him. Good night. In mid-1998, there was an event that I remember very clearly and wanted to share with you. My family and I lived in a small town in the countryside. I was about 12 years old, and we lived in a simple wooden house, surrounded by the tranquility of the countryside. Our only companions were our dogs, who also protected the house. We had a neighbor, Mr. Anselmo, who was an enthusiast of rural life. His backyard was a true spectacle of cultivation. Sweet potatoes, vegetables, and various fruits. Additionally, he raised chickens and pigs for his family's consumption, a true portrait of rural life. It was a night during Lent, a Friday. I remember it was around five in the morning when the silence was broken by the frenzied barking of the neighbor's dogs. Then, we heard the sound of chickens panicking, flying off the roost as if terrified. Something macabre seemed to have approached the pigsty, and the animals began to grunt and scream desperately. Mr. Anselmo, upon hearing all that commotion, thought that some thief was trying to steal his animals. He got up, grabbed his scythe, and went to check the situation. However, he was not prepared for what he was about to encounter. When he illuminated the pigsty with his lantern, he came across a large black figure, shaped like a wolf. The creature, feeling threatened, did not hesitate to fight back. Fear took hold of Anselmo, who quickly ran back to his house. But the creature did not give up and chased him to the door. Anselmo managed to get inside and lock the door, and we heard his shouts telling the creature to leave. I remember him shouting, Go away, get out of here, go back to where you came from. My father, awakened by the screams, got up to see what was happening but couldn't do much because the neighbor's yard was surrounded by tall bushes, preventing him from passing through. Shortly afterward, it seemed that the creature had disappeared as quickly as it had appeared. The next day, curious and concerned, we went to Mr. Anselmo's house, where I even used to play. When we got there, I was shocked by what I saw. The back door was all scratched as if a jaguar had passed through there. In the yard, especially over the sweet potato plantation, there were very strange and large footprints. In the pigsty, a pig was severely injured, with its skin raw and bleeding in some spots. Part of one of its ears was missing, torn off by something. I asked Mr. Anselmo what had caused that, and he, still shaken, replied, my boy, the werewolf came by here last night. Those words echoed in my mind for a long time. That night left all of us in the region apprehensive, and for weeks no one dared to go out at night. Stories of werewolves have always been part of local folklore, but seeing the evidence of such an attack up close, everything became very real and frightening. From that day on, the tranquility of our small town was never the same. The mystery and terror of that night remained alive in our memories, reminding us that sometimes legends and myths can manifest in unexpected and terrifying ways. Good night. Working at a pulp company in the 80s was like being in another world. The surrounding forests were vast and dense, and working with the logs demanded relentless effort and dedication. I was there every day, along with my colleagues, trying to do our best to ensure our livelihood. My name is Elias, and I had quite an arduous routine, but we had our moments of relaxation especially when mysterious and scary stories emerged. One of the most persistent rumors in the company was about a colleague of ours, a man named Joao. He was a reserved man, few words, and had a look that many said was disturbing. 
the stories told by those who swore they had seen or heard something extraordinary spoke of Juon turning into a werewolf during full moon nights. Of course, many of us laughed at those stories, but deep down, a small part of me always remained suspicious. It was a cold winter afternoon, and the sun was quickly setting behind the mountains. I was so focused on work that I didn't realize it was already time to leave. When I finally emerged from the piles of logs, I noticed that most of my colleagues had already left. Only Juome remained and he was looking at me with a strange gaze. Hey, wait up, he shouted, seeing me prepare to leave. There was something in his voice that made me uncomfortable, a tone I couldn't decipher. The night's cold began to intensify, and the darkness around us seemed to swallow everything except the shadows of the tall pines surrounding the company yard. I remembered the werewolf stories, and a shiver ran down my spine. Without thinking twice, I started to walk faster towards the exit, but Juwom's footsteps soon began to accelerate behind me trying to catch up. Fear took over me, and I started to run, feeling my heart pounding uncontrollably in my chest. I heard the sound of something big and heavy running behind me. I didn't dare look back. The sound of the footsteps was simply terrifying. Fear propelled me forward towards the cluster of houses where the employees lived. The distance seemed to stretch endlessly, and each step was harder than the last, while the noise behind me grew closer. Finally, I reached my house and, with trembling hands, opened the door and threw myself inside, slamming it shut. I leaned against the door, breathing heavily, trying to listen beyond my own pounding heartbeat, which was still deafening. That's when I heard the scratching. Something outside was scratching the door like a large dog, but the sound was deeper and more menacing. I didn't dare open the door to see what it was. I remained there, motionless, as the scratching continued, growing more desperate. Time seemed to drag on and I could only think of one thing. The stories were true. Fear paralyzed me, and I wondered what might happen if the door gave way. Finally, after what seemed like hours, the scratching stopped. I waited a while longer before moving, afraid that it might still be outside. When I finally gathered the courage, I peeked through the window, but all I saw was darkness. The next morning, I found Juan at the company as if nothing had happened. He gave me a brief nod and the same strange look as always. We never spoke about that night, but to this day, when the nights are dark and silent, I remember the sounds of footsteps and scratching, and the fear I felt running through the forest. I wonder if I will ever discover the truth about what happened that night and what Juo intended to do with me. Good night. I am a retired man, and for my leisure I decided that twice a month I would take my car and go on aimless trips. These trips gave me an indescribable pleasure, a feeling of freedom and discovery that I had never experienced before. Each new destination, each unknown road was a new adventure waiting for me with open arms. On one of these trips I found a small town that seemed frozen in time. The charm of the cobblestone streets, the houses with their colonial facades, and the tranquility in the air made me want to stay a bit longer. It was in one of the bars in this town that I met a group of men who became my friends. They were farmers, and seeing me alone at the bar, they struck up a conversation. 
Between sips of beer and laughter, they told me about their lives on the farm, their adventures and challenges. They seemed to be simple men, but with many stories to tell. When they learned that I traveled for pleasure and without a fixed destination, they found it curious and invited me to join a hunt that night. The idea excited me. I had never participated in a hunt before, and the prospect of spending time with my new friends seemed perfect. I accepted the invitation immediately. We all went to one of their farms to prepare. The atmosphere was one of excitement. We gathered our equipment and headed towards a dam. I found it curious when I saw they were building a platform in the middle of the water, but I didn't question it. I was there to enjoy the experience and learn from them. We got into a boat and sailed to the platform, which was about 30 meters away. When we arrived, one of the farmers turned on bright lights that illuminated the entire area around us. It was then that they told me our hunt would be special. We were going to hunt a werewolf. At first I thought it was a joke, but seeing the seriousness on their faces I realized they were not joking. They explained that the platform was a safe place because they believed the werewolf couldn't swim. We were all silent, alert to the slightest noise. The full moon shone brightly, reflecting on the surface of the dam. The wait seemed endless until suddenly we heard a howl in the distance. The sound grew closer, and our hearts raced. And then it appeared. A huge creature with dark fur and glowing eyes was prowling the edge of the dam. The thing watched us growling, trying to find a way to reach us. I could hardly believe what I was seeing. The legend of the werewolf was right there before our eyes. The farmers started shooting, but the bullets had no effect. The creature continued to prowl without being able to reach us. Time passed slowly. Each minute felt like an eternity. Finally, after many shots and numerous attempts to reach us, the werewolf gave up and went away. The tension began to dissipate, and my friends sighed in relief. We returned to the shore in silence, each lost in their thoughts. For me, that experience was more than just a simple adventure. The next morning, I said goodbye to my new friends and continued my journey. The road called to me again. However, things I used to do before, I no longer do. For example, stopping my car somewhere deserted to spend the night alone. What used to be a fear of thieves has now turned into a fear of something much worse that could tear me apart without me even knowing why. Good night. My name is Sergio and I would like to recount something I would prefer to forget, but I feel I must share it to warn others about the hidden dangers that can lurk in seemingly harmless places. It all started when my friend Lucas invited me to spend a weekend at a farm rented by some of his acquaintances. I thought it would be a good opportunity to relax and escape the routine of the big city. We arrived at the farm on Friday afternoon, with the sun still shining on the horizon. We greeted the people there. They seemed friendly and showed us around, making us feel welcome to explore. The farm was beautiful and exuded rustic charm. That night, after a pleasant outdoor dinner, we gathered around a campfire to tell stories and enjoy the tranquility of the place. However, the atmosphere changed drastically when we noticed strange movements around the house. Shadowy figures seemed to dance in the darkness, and the air felt heavy. 
Lucas and I exchanged worried glances but tried to stay calm, attributing the strange phenomena to our imagination or perhaps the effect of alcohol. However, when the sounds of chants and murmurs began to echo across the fields, our rationality crumbled. We decided to investigate discreetly, not wanting to alarm the others on the farm. As we approached the source of the sounds, our fear grew. We found a group of people wearing dark robes gathered around a smaller fire, performing dark rituals and invoking entities that should not be disturbed. The shock and horror paralyzed us when we saw some sort of body around the fire. We didn't know if it was real, but the terror intensified when we saw something hovering in the air, a shadowy, distorted figure that seemed to feed off the energy of the ritual. Lucas and I exchanged a panicked look, knowing we needed to get out of there immediately. We tried to leave silently, but we were discovered by one of the ritual practitioners. He stared at us with crazed eyes and shouted for the others to stop us from leaving. Now driven by the instinct for survival, we ran back to the main house. Our footsteps echoed through the silence of the night. The other members of the group started chasing us, their voices chanting sinisterly as they tried to stop us. We reached the car, gasping for breath, our hands trembling as we tried to fit the key into the ignition. The others were closing in quickly, their faces taking on demonic forms in the madness of the moment. With one final effort, we managed to start the car and speed away from the farm. As we fled down the dark road, the visions of the ritual and the supernatural figures hovering in the air still haunted our minds. We only stopped when we reached the nearest town, where we reported the incident to the local authorities. We never found out exactly who those people were, or what they were trying to summon. From that day on, we avoided adventures that could lead us to unknown places like that. Good night. My name is Lucas. I grew up on a farm in the countryside where my father was always the bravest man I knew. He always protected us from any threat that approached our family. One night, I was heading home with my girlfriend. We were coming back from a party. It must have been around four in the morning. We were both exhausted and my parents didn't know that my girlfriend was coming home with me that night. The way back was long and the dark winding roads didn't help at all. When we finally reached the farm, I sensed something was wrong. All the lights were on. Normally, when we went to sleep, my father left only one light in front of the house on. When I finally unlocked the door, we spotted my father. He was in the hallway holding a flashlight that dazzled our eyes. He was a guardian of the night darkness, and before we could get closer, he raised his shotgun towards us, yelling for us to stay away. My girlfriend and I were shocked and started shouting, What's going on, Dad? Finally, he realized it was me and lowered the shotgun. Is that you, son? He asked, the flashlight shaking in his hand, but his eyes remained alert, as if expecting any suspicious movement. 
That's when he rushed to the door and locked it with a speed I had never seen before. Dad, what's happening? I asked. He looked at us, his tired eyes revealing a mix of relief and concern, and began to explain. I'm sorry, but about two hours ago our farm was attacked by a werewolf, he said. Those words echoed in our minds. That's when my mother finally arrived in the room with her rosary in hand and started hugging me for being home safely. My father explained that he shot at the creature, but it didn't die and fled into the woods. My girlfriend and I were heading to the farm to sleep, but after all that commotion, we couldn't sleep. The night dragged on slowly, waiting for the possible return of the werewolf. My father remained vigilant with the shotgun, always within reach. Every sound outside made us tremble. My girlfriend and I huddled in a corner of the room, our minds swirling with thoughts. It was a long and distressing night, as my girlfriend and I thought that that night, my father out of desperation could have accidentally killed us. But thank God that didn't happen. Good night.